Welcome to Runegistics, the series where we walk through everything you need to know to complete an OSRS task or goal as efficiently as possible. Today's walkthrough is for Regicide. This guide applies to no restriction accounts as well as Iron Man accounts. Feel free to follow the inventory tracker, pause points, and pre-fight indicators at your leisure. Before beginning this quest, you'll need to have previously completed the quests Underground Pass, Biohazard, and Plague City. Completion of this quest will require 10 crafting and 56 agility. You can temporarily boost your agility using any of the following items to help you meet these requirements. It's recommended to bring Summer Pies since they have the highest agility increase available and also restore HP. To Close complete point. this quest, you'll need the following tradable items. You should take the time to gather the following materials prior to beginning this quest. Here's a quick path to take to get all required items for this quest. Start at the Limestone Quarry, northeast of Varrock, with a pickaxe, at least 200 GP, and rune to teleport to East Ardoin, Falador, and Varrock in your inventory. Mine a limestone rock and teleport to Varrock. Head to the rain shop and purchase a bow and some arrows. Then, head to the Varrock general store and take the spade that spawns on the second floor. From here, run to the barbarian village and mine the coal. I'd recommend mining three full circuits of the four ore spawns, for a total of 12 ore. Teleport to Falador and run to Taverly. Purchase a pestle and mortar from the herblore shop. Teleport to East Ardoin and travel to the general store. Buy two or three ropes, four balls of wool, and a tinder box. You should now have all required items you won't obtain during the quest. The following items are helpful during this quest. One anti-poison potion, a few stamina potions, a plank, and some summer pies. The following teleports are helpful to have to make completing this quest faster. Teleport to house if your house is in Remington, or teleporting to Falador, as well as teleport to West Ardoin or East Ardoin. Certain items are needed for certain sections of Regicide, so you will not need all of these items in your inventory at once. If you're ever curious which ones you should have in your inventory, Feel free to follow the inventory tracker on the screen. There's only one NPC you'll need to kill for this quest, a level 110 Tyrus Guard. He only uses melee and can be safe spotted. Therefore, your gear setup shouldn't take into account the fights and should take into account all the other requirements of the quest. Because of this, it's recommended to at least have just a bow and some arrows because there's a part of a quest that does require you to have those. Additionally, go ahead and put on your leather gloves or whatever gloves you have right now. That way, you don't have to worry about them later. Regicide can be broken up into four separate sections, accepting the quests and navigating the underground pass, arrival in Isifdar, and travel to Iowarth and Tiris's camp, building the bombs for Tiris's camp, and return to Isifdar and Ardoin. Here's the absolutely necessary starting inventory for this quest, which will remain on screen and continuously update. All other slots, you can put whatever you want. To begin this quest, speak to King Lothus in East Ardoin. Accept the start of the quest and travel to the Underground Pass. Note, you have to accept the start of the quest or you won't be able to progress past the Underground Pass. Travel through West Ardoin to the Underground Pass and navigate the pass to Ivan's Temple. We will cover navigating the pass in this video. If you are familiar with this task, you can skip ahead to the chapter titled Arrival in Isif Dar. Upon entering the Underground Pass, head west until you get to a divide with three options. Take the option to the north and climb over the rock slides. Afterwards, you should see some abandoned equipment and a bridge. Search the abandoned equipment for an oily cloth. Use the oily cloth on your arrows to obtain a fire arrow. Note that you will need to have the arrow in your inventory, not equipped. Then use your tinder box to light the arrow. After that, you can equip the arrow and your bow if you don't already have it equipped. Head to the other side of the wall and click on the guide rope for the bridge to shoot at it. You'll have to be on this side of the wall to be able to successfully locate and shoot at the rope. Successfully shooting the rope will cause the bridge to drop allowing you to continue. Now, continue over the bridge in west and move south once you reach the end of the hall. Head south until you can turn east, and continue east until you reach a forked path. Take the northern path where there is a trench. Use your rope on the rock above the trench. This does fail sometimes, which is why we brought an extra rope just in case. Swing over the trench once the rope successfully attaches to the rock. If you happen to fall while swinging over, follow the path out of the bottom where you will be back near the beginning of the pass. Follow the same path as before and try again. Continue east and turn south once available. Continue south until you can turn west. Once heading west, you will come across a rock slide. Climb over it. At this point, you will reach a small room with a 5x5 grid. In order to progress, you will need to follow a unique path that leads to the end of the grid. Some tiles have traps and some don't. It's a good idea to write down the path as you go. Once you get to the end of the path, pull the lever to the south. After passing the gate, head west until you see the odd marking on the wall. Search these odd markings to disable the traps in front of them. After passing the traps, keep west until you see a well in the middle of the room. Take the old journal by the well before climbing down the well. Now on the second floor, head west until you come across the prisoner area. Pick the lock on the first cage in this room to the south. Dig using your spade next to the mud pile in the cage. Once complete, head west and cross the ledge. At this point, there are two options. If you have level 50 thieves, 
leaving, continue south past the agility maze until you come to two doors. You can pick the locks on these doors to bypass the agility maze. If you don't have 50 thieving, you'll need to move through the agility maze. Follow the path here until you reach the end of the maze. Once complete, head south and squeeze through the pipe. Now in level 3, head northwest and through the tunnel from the entrance room. There are traps present in this tunnel, which you can avoid by placing your plank over the traps. If you did not bring a plank, you can just run through the trap, which will deal 10 to 12 damage. Once you have made it through the traps and followed the path to the well, you can drop your plank. Pass through the ominous door behind the well to continue. Now on the fourth and final floor of the pass, there are multiple multiple ways to navigating the agility maze to reach Ivan's throne room. Here's the path taken for this video. Once at Ivan's temple, you can talk to Koftik if you're low on food. He'll give you two pieces of bread and some stew. Once ready, climb through the Well of Voyage and navigate out of the cave into Isaf Dar. Walk slightly northeast into the forest until you are stopped by an elf named Idris. He will be killed by two other elves who tell you to talk to Lord Iowerth. From here, navigate the forest to Lord Iowerth's camp. On the way, you will encounter leaf traps, tripwires, and stick traps. All of these have a chance to deal significant damage, so make sure you have some food available. To assist, feel free to use the map above as ref. Once you arrive at camp and speak to Lord Iowerth, he will tell you to find his tracker. To get to him, follow the path you previously took. Only this time, when you reach the stick trap you originally jumped over, head south instead. After a few seconds, you will see the elf tracker in a small camp just north of the poison wastes. The tracker does not believe you initially, so you will need to return to Iowar. Head back to his camp and talk to him to get a crystal pendant. Return to the tracker with the pendant in your inventory and he will tell you to find Tyrus's camp. Just west of the tracker are footprints that lead to a dense forest obstacle. Select the follow options of the footprints and return to the tracker, who will teach you how to pass through the dense forest obstacle. Return Coming, to the dense fine. forest with the footprints and navigate through them. As soon as you complete the obstacle, you will be attacked by level 110 terrorist guard. You can easily safe spot him using ranged equipment and standing on one side of the patch of mushrooms in the opening he inhabits. You will need to kill at least one terrorist guard before continuing this quest. Once you kill the terrorist guard, head northwest over the tripwire obstacle, north through the dense forest obstacle, and west. You will see a catapult, at which point head south and through another dense forest obstacle. At this point, you will be in the Tyrus camp. Speak to General Heining, who will tell you you can't speak to King Tyrus. Head back to the elf tracker using the same path you took. He will tell you to go speak to Lord Iowar, who will give you the big book Obang. You need to read this book and keep it in your inventory. After reading the book, talk to Lord Iowarth and exhaust his dialogue on all the items you need to gather. Prior to leaving to gather the items, collect at least one barrel from the camp. Collect three if you want to save time for other quests in the future. Head back to the elf tracker and just south of him to the poison waste. Fill all of your barrels with the coal tar. Not all tiles next to the waste work, so ensure you select the one on screen, which has the take option. Once complete, also grab one sulfur from the neighboring deposits. At this point, you can now teleport out of Isif Dar. You should teleport to East Ardoin. After teleporting to East Ardoin, travel to the bank before continuing the quest. You can deposit all weapons, armor, and food, as well as the spade, rope, and anti-poison. You'll need to grab a pestle and a mortar, a pot, the four balls of wool, and at least 50 GP, as well as your limestone and some coal. It is recommended to grab at least 10 coal and withdraw them in noted form. You can have them unnoted in Rimmington, so bring some GP for this. Travel to Elena's house and speak to her about the quest. She will tell you to go see the chemist in Rimmington. From here, teleport to your house if it's in Remington or to Falador and head to the chemist. Talk to him about the quest to get permission to use the distiller. Prior to going to the distiller, make sure you unnote your coal with files in Remington before continuing. If it's your first time doing this quest, I'd recommend having 8 to 10 unnoted coal in your inventory. From here, head to the distiller outside and distill the barrel of coal tar into a barrel of naphtha. The simplest way to do this is the following. Add the barrel of coal tar to the fractionalizing still. Stop point. Be ready to react after the next step. Turn the tar regulator valve on the right all the way to the right. Two clicks total. This will cause the pressure gauge to start moving. The pressure gauge will move up once it lands in the green zone. Click the left valve once. which will regulate the pressure and stop it from moving. If the valve did not land in the green zone, you can do one of the following. If the pressure is too low, i.e. still in the tan zone, turn the pressure valve down and let the gauge move into the green zone. If the pressure is too high, turn the pressure valve on the left up, which will relieve pressure, 
Wait for it to return to the green zone and turn the left pressure valve back down to the middle. Also, if at any point the pressure gauge makes a full circle, it will reset the tar regulator valve and you will start again by turning the right tar regulator valve back up to the third tick. Once you have it stopped in the green zone, you will not need to set it again. Click on the add coal furnace icon three times to add three pieces of coal to the distiller. You will see the heat gauge move up and should stop somewhere in between the word heat and in the green zone. The total distilled bar will begin filling up with the light green color. The goal at this point is to continue adding coal to keep the heat gauge in an acceptable range to keep the total distilled bar going up. The easiest way to do this is to add one coal every time the heat gauge stops covering the letter T in heat. If you follow this method, it should only take about three or four more coal to complete the distillation. Once you have completely filled up the green bar, close the interface to receive the barrel of naphtha. Now, head to the farm south of Falador. Once there, use the loom to turn your four balls of wool into a strip of cloth. Now head north to Falador and head to the furnace. Stop point. Make sure you have gloves equipped when processing the limestone in the next steps. Also make sure that you have a pot in your inventory. If you don't, you will lose the quick lime. With gloves equipped, put the limestone in the furnace to get quick lime. Use this with the pestle and mortar and a pot in your inventory to get a pot of quicklime. Use the pestle and mortar on the sulfur to get ground sulfur and use the ground sulfur on the barrel of naphtha. Then use the pot of quicklime on the naphtha mix, creating a barrel bomb. Use the strip of cloth on the barrel bomb to complete the assembly. Note that the name of the item won't change. Stop by a bank before continuing the quest. You'll need to go through the underground pass one more time, so withdraw your bow and arrows, as well as a tinder box, two ropes, an anti-poison potion, and a spade. Also withdraw some runes to teleport to East or West Ardoin twice. You can fill the rest of your inventory out with food and or stamina or energy potions. This is the final trip to the bank needed for the quest. Teleport to East or West Ardoin and head to the underground pass. Navigate the pass again and into Isafdar. Once there, kill a rabbit and cook it on one of the available fires in the area. Head to the catapult outside of Tiris's camp. Talk to the guard next to the catapult and give him the cooked rabbit meat. Once he is distracted, use the bomb on the catapult with the tinderbox in your inventory. There's a cutscene where you will see the bomb exploding at the camp. At this point, head back to Lord Iowar. He will give you a letter to take to King Lathus. Teleport back to East or West Ardoin and head to the Ardoin Castle. Prior to entering, you will be stopped by an elf who will tell you to read the letter. Read it and then talk to Keen Lathis to complete the quest.